thanks a million, Lisa. Um, my name is Sharon Flynn, and I'm the project manager of the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project, um, which is a, a project which involves seven universities. Um, and in the, the true collaboration of um, the the project. Um, I'm going to be joined today, hopefully, by Rob and Suzanne again, in case you haven't heard enough of them, but also Kate Malloy from NUI Galway. And um, also uh, Morag Monroe is here from Maynooth. And I think uh, Mairead O'Reilly is also here in the background. So just very quickly, um, the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project um, was originally a three-year project funded through the, the HEA Innovation and Transformation Programme. Um, it was due to finish uh, last month, but we've been granted an extension to September 2022. And um, as a very high level, I suppose the project vision was to mainstream digital in teaching and learning activities in Irish universities by addressing professional development of all who teach or support teaching and learning. Um, and obviously the, the project itself started um, before um, the COVID situation, um, which did impact the project uh, quite a bit. But um, we have, um, in, in many ways, I suppose the, the remit of the project has expanded, um, but also we have kept true to that vision. So today we're going to just talk a little bit about um, the open course, which we ran um, during November and December, and which was developed by the team starting about last March. Um, so how the project is organized, there has been a focus or one of the, the foci has been on professional development of academic staff in the area of digital teaching. Um, and so the way that the project was organized is that each partner university sort of arranged and, and thought about how they would implement that within their own university context, according to their own strategy goals set up um, etc. So, um, so just on the screen here, you'll see some of the different types of activities um, in the area of professional development, which took place across the seven universities. And initially, before COVID happened, um, we were looking at um, developing different, um, I suppose, little programs and looking at how we could compare them across the seven universities. Um, each one, as I say, um, sort of uh, uh, putting together their own work program. But then we would um, look at using the digital competency framework for educators, the DigComp Edu framework, which um, Rob and Suzanne already mentioned, in order to try and um, have a, an umbrella or a structure or a framework which would allow us to think about all of the diff different activities um, so that we could compare and contrast and see where the gaps were. Um, so I'm actually going to invite Morag, if you can unmute yourself, um, to talk a little bit about um, some of those activities and how we tried to uh, recognise the staff who took part in them. Thanks, Sharon. Hopefully I'm unmuted successfully now. Um, so a key piece of work for us um, very early on in the project was for us to find a way to recognise and reward the work of our colleagues in the respective institutions who were engaging with the project. So in order to do that, we worked with the National Forum to develop a new digital badge getting started with personal and professional digital capacity. As well as supporting the participants to develop their digital skills in line with the Digicomp Edu framework that we've heard about already today, the badge is also aligned with the National Forum's professional development framework, with a particular focus on domain level five of the framework, which is personal, professional, sorry, digital capacity in teaching and learning. So the badge supports participants to first reflect on how they currently use technology to support teaching and learning. And in order to do that, they consider their digital capacity in the context of the National Forum's professional development framework, as well as the DigiComp Edu framework. And based on that, they identify a new skill that they'd like to develop. And this can be something, for example, like a short video, a podcast, a multimedia resource, or using a new tool in their college or university's VLE. Participants then plan a teaching activity that makes the best use of that technology for their own context. And then finally, they look at how they might evaluate the success of the new activity. So we ran the badge on a pilot basis in the first instance, and during that time, it was awarded both on the basis of our work with discipline and special interest groups. Um, and also, in some cases, it was embedded into accredited professional development modules. And you can see some of the metrics for the initial rollout of the badge here. 
So based on the success of this initial pilot phase, we wanted to extend the reach of the badge. And in order to do that, we next developed an online course to support the badge in partnership with the National Forum and also involving all of our partner institutions. So I'm now going to hand over to Rob, who's going to talk about how we went about this. Thanks, Morag. Um, so as you can see on screen there, we used the ABC learning design approach to design the open course. Uh, some of you may be familiar with that um, already. It's, uh, purported to be a, a rapid uh, design approach. You can get a module designed in 90 minutes or, or, or two hours. We took a slightly different approach and, and we um, added to, us to our ABC storyboard and to our course design bit by bit, uh, week by week. We met weekly uh, over Zoom for synchronous storyboarding sessions for several weeks last spring to really thrash out ideas and to revise ideas. We spent a lot of time in that phase of the, of the, of the course development rather than in content development uh, because uh, we actually came to the conclusion that really our, our course wouldn't necessarily be a very content heavy course, but it would largely be following the, the badge criteria, of course, it would largely be based around people's individual desires to explore a particular area of digital capacity relevant to themselves and their context and explore that and practice that and reflect on that and evaluate that. So uh, it'd be quite individual, but the triad structure that some of you may be familiar with from the National Forum Open Courses was incredibly important in this course. And we realized that early on that um, the, 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 the time spent on the course would be around practice and engagement and collaboration more so than, than, than looking at, at, at content. Um, because of that, I suppose digital capacity is a very broad area and uh, there's a huge unknown factor. So we were very uncertain who our learners would be and what their needs would be and uh, would need and, 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 and what we would need to, to support them. So I think we, we certainly all felt a little bit of anxiety uh, in that, you know, you're, you're, you're giving away that kind of self sense of control and stepping into the unknown. Uh, what, what resources we did create, uh, we were conscious to make them VLE agnostic, we were conscious to make them consistent and clear and uh, useful so that they could be adopted and rolled out by, by other people. So we summarised our course into different guides, we got some lovely um, videos created where, where each one of the, the team involved uh, gave an overview of, of different aspects of the course, and that was really important for teacher presence as well, because again, you know, because so much of the work would be individual and triad led, we did still want people to get a sense of who we were as facilitators and let us know and let them know that we are we are still there. So it's a very uh, unique course in, 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 in the sense that we're sort of all in it together. We were very open with the participants about that, that we're learning from them as much as they're learning on their journey about digital capacity um, as well. And we're learning from this iteration to refine the course design into the future. Um, so I'll hand you now over to Kate, I think. Yes, I'll see if I can successfully unmute myself. I think it's okay. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, just some um, practicalities, I suppose, around the, the course. So obviously, um, it's a difficult semester. It's, it's been a difficult time in higher education. And, and we launched the course on the national level on the National Forums platform, on their Moodle platform, as a six unit, six week course um, back in November. So if you're familiar with the, the digital badges and the open courses offered by the forum, you're talking about 25 learner hours or roughly one ECTS. And we were actually really grateful to see um, just the interest that that really was um, was there for the course. We had over 80 participants signed up and, and given, as we all know, the time of semester that was, that was surprising, but it was it was obviously quite heartening. Um, and as my project colleagues have, have kind of, I've already alluded to, the course itself is largely self-paced. So we, we didn't want to offer mandatory synchronous sessions. We only had two live webinars that were recorded you know, to offer that sense of flexibility. Um, and the units really highlighted the process, um, as, as my colleagues have referred to, that these participants, you know, would hopefully adapt, you know, in their own teaching, that giving them a sense in unit one to self-reflect, to look at DigComp, to, um, to see where they're at, to, to set some goals for themselves. And, in the subsequent units to really explore new skills independently and with the support of their triads, with your facilitators mentoring and offering dropping sessions. And 
exploring that skill to an extent that they're trying things out, that they're building something like Morag has, has talked about, whether it was audio or podcast or a video, trying something new and ultimately planning a digital enhancement where they were thinking about the pedagogical applications um, of this enhancement and also planning for an evaluation and, and working closely with their peer groups and being motivated um, and encouraged by their peer groups to complete that enhancement and ultimately signing off within those peer groups to um, provide evidence that they, they had met the criteria for the badge. So as Rob had said, you know, we were quite open about, uh, about the course that, you know, we, we weren't providing technical training, that this is really a process that we would hope um, our participants would really learn to adapt if, you know, they were, they were attempting to enhance their own digital teaching and learning. And frankly, it's not a content heavy course, as others have said, that it is quite reflective. And we were lucky within the project team, um, obviously, a few of us are, are here today um, that have developed the course. And uh, it was it was fantastic just to have, you know, the handover within the different units and everything. So there's strength and numbers in terms of our facilitators. Um, so at that stage, I'd like to hand over to Suzanne. Brilliant. OK, so um, really what I wanted to do was um, just speak a little bit about the, the participant um, reaction to the course. And, and, and people were quite positive about the experience. Time, as always, as you can see uh, on the work, the, the word cloud, there is an issue. Um, but it was interesting to see that participants were realistic about the size of the project that they could complete within uh, the time frame, and we're hoping that we'll be able to share um, those uh, projects as an open education resource um, at some time in the future. Uh, it was interesting to see that some participants linked the work from other national forum badges, for example, the Universal Design for Learning badge in in their in this. Um, in this uh, project uh, as well. Uh, it, it gave us an opportunity certainly at DCU to reconnect with staff at a local level because um, you know uh, some of the, the people that we met throughout um, the, this badge, I guess it, it, it just it, they reached out to us to kind of get some extra support um, in relation to their projects. So that was a really nice opportunity uh, for us. And then in terms of just, I suppose, personally, the interact the interaction and the sharing at the start of the um, of the badge was really excellent. excellent. People were introducing themselves and it's kind of easier to, to connect and get active on a discussion forum at that point. And I would love to see that kind of uh, enhanced into the future. So that's it. Uh, Lisa's cut me off there. OK. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm the big bad wolf here. Uh, thank you so much, Sharon and Go, for a, a, a wonderful session, a wonderful pr a presentation there. Um, can I ask, are there any quick questions there? We are a minute or two behind schedule. Apologies for that. All very quiet in the room. I'm, I'm interested, actually, in that... Um, Sorry, Katie. Yeah, no, no, not quite on time. Almost on time. Um, uh, I'm actually interested in that final slide that I rushed you through, unfortunately, that uh, triads came out as, as very positive. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was quite striking. Um, sorry, Suzanne, I'm talking over you there. But yes, um, when we asked about what, what people really enjoyed about the course, the triads came through very strongly. And there was, you know, I think Rob mentioned it as well. Even at the design stage, we realized the trides were going to be so important. So, yeah, that came to, that is coming through very strongly in the feedback. So um, I suppose that's that's one positive and something that we'll definitely um, keep in mind when we're reviewing the course. 